Hey folks, Mr. Brusher here again. We got the triple beam balance now. We're gonna work on measuring, you guessed it, mass using the triple beam balance. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is make sure all three beams are lined up at zero. Notice, all three beams are lined up at zero. Then you also wanna make sure that the triple beam balance is in fact balanced. So the zero marker should line directly up with that little pin where the white line is there. And this one appears to line up almost perfectly. So we're ready to go. All right. The next thing you want to do is find something that you're going to measure the mass of. So I have here 16 dimes. First we're going to measure the mass of 8 dimes and then we're going to measure the mass of 16 dimes try to get as accurate of a read as possible. Okay, the first thing that we wanna do is put the eight dimes onto our triple beam balance. Sometimes, if you're using a liquid, you might put a jar or some type of container on top of the triple beam balance first and measure that, and then you'll subtract how much that container, the mass of the container, uh, before recalculating. But we're using a solid, so I'm going to place the dimes directly onto the triple beam balance. Here we go. Two dimes. Notice the level already went up. Four dimes. Six dimes. And eight dimes. All these dimes, I may have to buy me a soft drink later. All right, now let's look at this triple beam balance. The first thing you want to do is start with the largest amount. Okay, we're going to work our way down from largest to smallest. So we end with the very smallest amount on this triple beam balance. I'm going to move this one over one unit. I move it over one unit. Now, the, the mass of the dimes is not enough to hold 100 grams. So I need to move that back to zero and go to my next, my next largest measuring device. When I move this one over, I'm gonna move it over to 10. Notice that it did not yet go down. So I need to add more weight to the side of this triple beam balance. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to 20 grams. Ooh, it's starting to drop there. I'm going to have to now, since it's all the way on the bottom, I'm going to have to go back to the 10 grams and start moving this smaller gram measuring. This is my smallest measurement uh, that I will use on the triple beam balance. And I'm going to move this over. It's probably going to go almost to 10. Move this over until I balance starts to go balance. Okay, now when you want to get it balanced, anytime that it's down, you want to take away some grams from the triple beam balance. And anytime that it's above the zero marker, you want to add a little bit. So it's still below, and I'm going to take away a little bit more. And it's still below, taking away just a little bit more. Ooh, it's almost even. Still below it just a little bit. I might take away a little bit more. Now we can see that my marker here is almost exactly on zero. Now I just need to measure or read my triple beam balance to see about how much these dimes actually measure to. Okay, let's see here. It's about exactly perfect right there. Could maybe take off another tenth of a gram. Okay, now we can measure it. So I'm looking back here at the second one that I moved. This big, larger one is on zero. This second one is on 10. So I'm gonna take 10 grams and I'm gonna add it to however many grams there are showing right here. If we look closely at this, you can see that there are 
exactly 8 grams. You could maybe say about 8.1 grams. So we have 10 plus the 8.1, we would have 18.1 grams. Don't forget to record that information in your science log or your journal. 18.1 grams. All right, now it's time to add eight more dimes. We're gonna see how accurate that measurement is. So I grab my eight dimes and gently place them onto the triple beam balance. Try to get it in the center. Okay, and now I'm going to measure again. Now, I can start with the largest one once again, but it will likely go down. Okay. We could have predicted that because if there were eight dimes and it only weighed about 18.1 grams, then adding eight more shouldn't make it go up the other 81.9 grams. So I'm gonna go to my next largest and move it over. Ooh. Make sure you move all the others back to zero. It's still not down, so I'm going to have to add a little bit more. So I'm going to move it up to 30 grams. Still did not drop the pin over here, so I'm going to add a little more. Now it dropped. What do I need to do? That's right. Go back one more time, one more space with that particular measuring device. Now I'm going to start adding with the very small one. Slowly adding, and I'm watching for that pin over here to drop. It's starting to drop now, but it's still above the zero. So I'm going to have to keep adding. As long as it's above the zero, I add a little more. Okay. Now we're almost exactly at the zero right now. So now you can calculate. See how it's perfectly even right here with the zero? We're now ready to calculate. I have 30 grams right here. And over here I have uh, about 6.4 grams. So I add those together. 30 plus 6.4 would be 36.4 grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and record that information on my data sheet. 36.4 grams. Now, all I need to do is use this information that I've already recorded and make a prediction. How much would 45 dimes be? Why don't you try it on your own? You can maybe use pennies. Five pennies and ten pennies and then make your prediction for 45. Well, I hope, you ho I hope this helped you out. We'll catch you later.